The memoir is called The Housekeeper, Love, Death, and Prize Fighting. It came out Wednesday, and it can be found on Amazon.com. We now welcome in UFC middleweight and Access TV Fights veteran Josh Suman. And Josh, number one, welcome. Congratulations on the book. Thank you. And, uh, you know, this is a very personal look into your life. Was it therapeutic for you, Josh, to put those emotions into this work? Yeah, that was one aspect of it, and there was a lot of catharsis to be gained from uh, from writing everything down and just trying to make sense of the whole thing. But <clears throat> the functions of uh, of this book were just plentiful, you know. I mean, it was to connect with people that may be going through similar situations. Um, you know, it was to... Uh, you know, to, to immortalize her and just and keep the memories alive. And, and I mean, a big part of it was to, uh, you know, to open up discussion um, about things um, that I struggled with, that a lot of people struggle with, you know, that I have a platform, I have the ability to, um, to, to share things and, and, uh, and, and, and start talking about mental illness and, and addiction and things that, that all sorts of folks all over the world deal with. And, and sometimes it's taboo. Uh, to speak about these things, but the, but you know, I want people to know that it's okay to be in pain and it's okay to struggle and it's okay to stumble as long as you get up and keep going. So l let's talk about that, about the addiction, because that was before you met her. Yeah, I mean, early throughout my <clears throat> life, and um, you know, in addiction is something that can be lifelong, and, and it often is, you know. It and is, so that, yeah, that was yeah. something that 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 I was introduced to early in life, and. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just one of those things that you always got to keep a, uh, you know, you always got to keep an eye on and make sure that you're, you know, just everything in moderation, I think, is the, is the, is the concept. Yeah, that, but uh, yeah. the thing with that is also with fighters, you know, like constantly f the thrill seekers. And, and I always see that's, that's pretty much the same. A lot of fighters have the same thing. A lot of top athletes have the same. And once they stop competing, it's very hard for them to stay clean on everything. Some become drunks, the other one painkillers. I mean, there's a lot of stuff. That goes on. So yeah, you learned your lesson early on, I guess, and then you found her. The early in life, yeah, and then and, and so like I said, I think that addiction is something that that uh, that that you know just touches all walks of life. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just uh, it's not just athletes. Um, you know, it's not just children who don't know what they're doing. It's, it's you know we all know what it's like, whether it's through ourselves or through a loved one or or whatever the case may be. You know, it's uh, you know it's uh, it's worldwide, and um, you know it's okay to talk about. Josh, you openly talk about drug addiction in this book. Uh, you know, it's a hot topic in MMA right now with John Jones coming out and saying he was addicted <clears throat> to marijuana. Do you feel there is a substance abuse problem in MMA right now? Not any more than there is in, in any other sport or, or, you know, anywhere else. You know, like I said, I think these things and these topics are universal. And so um, the combat sports and mixed martial arts is well, the, the thing that gives me the platform to talk about these things. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm grateful for that. I'm fortunate to have it. Um, but, you know, I just want to make sure that I'm, that I'm using it for the, you know, for all the right reasons. Yeah. Yeah, there's more people uh, than I think. Because today, you know, on our, the podcast that I have also with Mara, we, uh, I, I actually we opened up it. But I, I had an, uh, an Oxycontin addiction as well that nobody knew of. And you treated you treat, treated probably with the Suboxone also. Did, how did you stop it? Did you just cold turkey stop it or did you take medication to... No, no, I, I mean, I, cold turkey was kind of the method for me when, it, when, oh. when, I, when I've had <clears throat> problems with... Uh, you know, with, with substance abuse in the past. And so um, fighting has kind of always helped me with that too. You know, it's, it's, it's very difficult to, uh, you know, to be drinking every night and then go to training camp and, and working out the next day. So it's, you know, so <clears throat> that's, a, that's a big function of, of my health is uh, continuing to stay active and, and, and just being a lifelong martial artist. And so like you mentioned, a lot of times when guys um, are done with their careers, they, they kind of wander and they, um, you know, they, they go in different directions that cannot always be positive. And so uh, martial arts for me is something that I need to make sure that I, that I, that I stay rooted in, stay grounded in, and, uh, and be a leader to, the, you know, the, um, the kids that are coming up and uh, just trying to, you know, trying to uh, uh, bestow upon them the lessons that I've learned uh, without them having to learn the, the hard way. You see, that's why Pat Militich chases tornadoes. Because you he go. doesn't want to fall in that Running trap. Running the iron. Yeah. He says, yeah. otherwise, you know, other guys do this and this and this. I like to find my thrill yeah. right there. Yeah. Well, you're 12 and three, three and one in the UFC, and congratulations! A big news that you're now facing veteran of 28 fights, Tim Boach. What a great matchup! Woo what a big <laughs> name for you, Josh, to face Tim. Give us your thoughts on this matchup. You know. 
Tim is a, is is the first guy that I've ever fought that I've watched on TV for several years. You know, nice. so um, you know all, all my past opponents. You know, were, were just kind of up and comers like me. Tim's one of those guys. That he's at a different. He's a, he's at a he's at a fork in the road. You know, and so um, it could go one of two ways. But you know, I, I've I've got to send him down the path of retirement, the path of uh, you know, I, I think. He probably got one more one more loss before the UFC gives him the boot. So you know, I, I'm a fan of the guy, uh, but but I will be the person to to finish him and uh, and send him packing. Yeah. He will always it's be dangerous. Business. You know that when you fight him, like <laughs> the last move you were talking about, the yeah, last yeah. second something can happen. Absolutely, that's yeah. Tim Boots, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, that happened in the Okami fight, I believe. You know, where, yep. where Okami yeah. was, was and, and same thing with Brad Tavares. They both of those fights he was losing, and uh, and he remains dangerous for all 15 minutes. So that's definitely something to keep in mind and to consider in training camp as well as the night of the fight. Yep. The hot topic before we let you go, Josh, Conor McGregor, <laughs> your take. We've asked everybody else, so you're, you're no exception. I don't think he'll retire. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a fan of Conor, and, 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 and it's kind of funny how uh, after that fight with Nate, both of those guys were elevated so much. I think that Conor um, gained a lot of fans with his, his humility and, and the way that he handled the loss and the things that he said afterwards. Um, and, and same with Nate. It was cool to see Nate, um, mm. you know, finally get the spotlight and the shine that he deserves. So um, when, when, when good fights happen, happen like that and both fighters are elevated it's really good for the sport so it's cool to watch and uh, whatever the hoopla may be around 200 and Conor McGregor um, you know I think I think it's safe to say that he has all of our attentions no matter what that 